everything that I talked in the previous video should have been good enough to help you develop a general perception of what the stream processing means and what we do in a real time stream processing. However, to cement the idea and concrete your understanding, I am going to talk about five different technical categories where stream processing is applied. I will also give you some specific business examples. But the main idea is to broadly classify the technical categories where stream processing is being used. While the categories that I am going to talk about are not exhaustive, but I have tried to arrange them in the increasing order of complexity. A typical business may want to start with the first category of the use case and progress towards the more complex use case. Let's talk about these categories in a little more detail. Incremental ETL is one of the most common requirements for enterprises. I'll quickly skim through one very basic and one advanced example to help you understand the concept. At the most basic level, it is similar to turning your OLTP databases into a stream of events, applying transformation in real time, and finally pushing it to the target data store where it is actually used. These implementations could be as simple as a combination of change data capture and a real-time transformation pipeline. We have been using it in data warehouses. This figure shows a typical implementation of the CDC in a data warehouse or a data lake setup. In this configuration, a change producer continuously monitors the redo logs and produces a stream of events for the change consumer on the other side. The consumer materializes the stream back to the target database. This figure also shows a coordinator. CDC tools often need a coordinator to configure, coordinate and monitor the whole process. The CDC process may be as simple as continuously bringing data to the data warehouse. But in many cases, we can also implement a sequence of transformations on the fly. Such transformations may include data quality checks, data enrichment and other data enhancements. Incremental ETL is the most basic streaming application and it is quite popular because it allows you to incorporate new data within seconds, enabling users to query it faster at the downstream systems. However, the same idea of incremental ETL is taken up by teams to create a much more sophisticated stream processing pipeline. We see a typical example of extension of this idea in most of the social media platforms. Let's take a simple problem from social media applications such as LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter. As a user of a social media platform, we perform two types of operations. We create some content which is a right operation for the social media platform. We also consume some content and that would be a read operation for the social media platform. The big question is how do they support these read write operations for such a massive population at a reasonable speed. At a very high level, the solution is simple. What is it? Any guesses? Well, the idea is as simple as to partition the overall system and serve a finite number of users from each partition at a deterministic speed. What does that mean? That simply means all my read-write operations are served by a specific partition of the system and hence a particular database. Whatever I write, goes to that partition and when I read something, it comes from the same partition. And this specific partition might be serving 100,000 users of which 1000 might be active at any given point in time. Similarly, other partitions are serving a different group of users. I am oversimplifying things and such systems require a careful design in terms of routing, load balancing, caching and you may have to solve many other complex problems. 
but the idea is to distribute the workload among partitions and improve the read write operation you might be wondering in all this where is the real time stream processing let me come to that part let's assume i am using a popular social media platform and they have a dedicated database partition based on my user id where all my contents are stored i can create a post i can write some comment i can like a comment and do many other things all these activities are generating some content that goes and sits into my database partition the write operation is efficient and scalable because the load balancer redirects my request to the service that stores my content in my database partition now let's look at the read operation the read operation also appears to be quick i open the social media app or the website based on my user id the page load is redirected to the service that serves me the service reads the page content from the database partition and serves it very quickly all looks good however there is a catch some of the key ingredients of my social media page are my feeds my messages and my notifications where are they coming from these are not the content that i created and hence they were not supposed to be in my storage partition my social media feed is the content that is produced by the people i follow my notifications are based on the activities of other people on my content such as they commented or liked one of my posts what does all that mean well these are the events that are being generated by some other sources such as the people whom i follow the people who comment on my post the advertisement that is identified relevant for me those events are flowing to my database partition in real time so that they can be served to me quickly and this is where the real time incremental etl or real time data preparation is being implemented the solution to this problem could be an excellent implementation of real time stream processing this may fall under the incremental etl category however it may not be a straight forward cdc extract on the fly transformation and final load into the target database that you might have seen in the data warehouses the next category is the real time reporting if you have worked in business intelligence applications you are already familiar with this category yes i am talking about dashboards and reports but these reports are real time reports that refresh in seconds or in milliseconds and you can find them all over organizations use stream processing applications to run real time dashboards and this one is the second most popular category where we see amazing implementations of real time stream processing let me give you some examples of some specific use cases infrastructure monitoring is one common area every platform team would use a dashboard to monitor the platform kpis such as storage cpu network usage overall system load uptime etc another excellent example of monitoring is to watch the adoption of new features as they are rolled out among applications what does it mean that means you introduced a new feature in your app and started collecting data about how many users are adopting to the new functionality is it working fine how quickly is it getting popular among your users and many other similar things campaign management is another similar use case most of the e-commerce applications continuously monitor the effects that new campaigns and site changes may have on their traffic such as to see whether a one day promotion is driving traffic to their site business dashboards are a common requirement businesses use real time dashboards to monitor kpis such as delivery backlog on time shipment loading time indicators etc 
These KPIs, when generated in real time, are critical for planning, organizing, and taking in time decisions for day to day operations. The next category is the real time alerting. Notification and alerts are probably the most apparent streaming use cases. And they are the next stage of real time reporting. In a typical example, these applications identify a pattern of events or continuously compute a threshold to trigger an alert. Let me give you some specific use cases. Supply chain alerts is a typical example. In this case, a real-time notification is pushed to the mobile device of the warehouse employee for the fulfillment of critical orders. Healthcare monitoring is another critical area. In these cases, patients' essential readings are continuously monitored remotely against a threshold by using sensors. And alerts are generated to provide in-time efficient medical services. Traffic monitoring is another use case. These systems use traffic data streams to immediately detect incidents and reduce the impact by notifying to the right people for timely actions. Other two categories are intricate areas. First one is the real-time decision making and machine learning. Real-time decision making involves analyzing new inputs and responding to them automatically using some business logic. This business logic may include a set of simple business decisions or rules. However, it could also be an application of a medium to sophisticated machine learning model. But in all cases, these systems make clear, concrete and automated decisions. Some specific examples are listed here. Fraud detection. A bank that wants to automatically verify whether a new transaction on a customer's credit card represents fraud by applying a decision tree and then deny the operation if the charges is determined fraudulent. And that's what we call fraud detection that must happen in real time. Real time clinical measurement. I'm not sure if you have heard about the Vicencia Safety Index. VSI is a real-time data-driven clinical measurement. It can make accurate predictions about the patient's deterioration up to 24 hours earlier. Such predictions should permit medical interventions to save both life and money. Real-time bidding is another excellent example. When a user visits a web page, a request for an advertisement goes to the exchange where multiple advertisers bid for the ad space in real time. However, the decision goes in favor of the highest bidder. This also happens in milliseconds. Personalized customer experience is the key focus area for any modern business. Customer experience is critical for every industry. But for our purpose, let's take an example from an online gaming system. Gaming platforms implement adaptive gameplay to fine-tune the difficulty level, ensuring that the session is sufficiently challenging without being boring or frustrating. And these things are done in real time. Finally, the last category is the online machine learning and AI. You should not confuse this category with the real-time decision making that also may apply a machine learning model in the real time to take decisions. This category is specific to the online machine learning and AI, where the model is trained in real time on live data. Online machine learning is the real artificial intelligence and the most challenging area of stream processing and machine learning. In this technique, the real time data is used to update the best prediction at each step. In many cases, Online learning dynamically adapts to the new patterns in the data and optimize the learning model in real time. There is not much work done in this area yet and still various researches are under the way. Great, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. The tool and the technology that we are going to learn in this course 
may or may not be able to solve the problems of all these five categories alone. The end-to-end -end solution for any of these problems would require a combination of many tools and technologies. However, the objective of this course is to develop a solid foundation and understanding of real-time stream processing paradigm and learn the role of Apache Kafka and Kafka Streams API in developing these type of solutions. See you in the next lecture. Keep learning and keep growing.